Welcome back. We've been talking a lot about voting legislation, which has been passed in states like Georgia, which many activists say is suppressing the vote, especially that of black voters. Now, our next guest disagrees. So we're joined now by Joe Collins, Republican candidate for California's 43rd district. That is the seat that is currently held by Democrat Maxine Waters. Uh, Joe, good to have you here with us today. Now, you say that the voting legislation in states like Georgia, like the proposals that we're seeing in Texas and 42 other states are not suppressive at all. Why is that? Well, thank you for having me. And the reason why I don't think that the voting laws that are being passed are suppressive um, are because, you know, in most states, you have to have an ID to be able to vote. In most states, you can't panhandle around polling places or, or uh, voting places to give people food and water in order to sway votes. And so this is why I don't think these legislations that, that are being passed when it comes to voting is, is oppressive. I don't think they're racist. But accountability is always important. Uh, you talk about voting for someone who has the ability, the power to change your entire life. I think that accountability uh, is absolutely important. And I think that this is what these laws do. IDs are absolutely important, ensuring that you don't have any type of special interest, Democrats or Republicans, around the polling places, panhandling for votes is absolutely important. We have to get those things out. We have to ensure the integrity of our elections. Okay, so Joe, I hear what you're saying about the, the voter ID requirements and then also that bit about handing out food and water to people that are waiting in line before they can go vote. But let's put that to the side for a moment because these voting uh, bills go and they do much, much more than just those two things. And we had just a moment, hopefully we can pull that graphic back up again about what's actually in some of these proposals. There is now going to be less time for voters to request absentee ballots. It's now going to be illegal for election officials to mail out absentee ballot applications to just all voters. The amount of drop boxes has completely been reduced. Mobile voting centers are uh, pretty much going to be banned. Um, if you go to the wrong polling place, for example, it's going to be harder for you to vote once you do arrive at the correct uh, ballot box or at the correct polling place, I should say. Would you not say that at least those measures do not seem to at all expand the ability for everyone to vote, which frankly is a you know nonpartisan issue. Everyone, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, should want as many people to participate in the electoral process as possible. Yes, I absolutely agree. We should have as many people participating in our election process, but only those who are qualified to vote. Now, the biggest issue with sending out mass uh, mail-in ballots is, you know, sometimes people don't update their voter registration. We're taking for granted that sometimes people forget certain things. And so where you get in houses where you have two and three ballots, you want your guy to win. The potential for, you know, possible election fraud is there, filling out two and three ballots. We know the machines does not verify signatures. We can't forget the personal bias that people have towards different candidates. And so, yes, I think these measures are important. No, I do not think they're uh, oppressive. I don't think they're racist in any matter. The laws affect everyone, Democrat and Republican, like you said. Joe, you know, a number of, of uh, companies uh, faced boycotts, uh, criticism from folks asking them to pull out of Georgia to boycott in some way over these laws. We saw uh, the baseball commissioner, Rob Manfred, pull the summer classic the all-star game from Atlanta this summer. Some of our guests this week have said that the MLB is on the right side of history. What do you say to that? Well, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not a part of the Major League Baseball franchise, so I can't speak specifically to them. But what I can say is that when the Major League Baseballs, when the sports, when the companies uh, have businesses, their businesses create revenue for those cities. So when you pull that business, when you pull that event, from the cities, you're actually hurting the cities, you're hurting the, the, the residents of that city. Now, I do agree that the companies have the right to express their opinions by uh, moving their, their uh, organization to another state. Do I agree with it? Absolutely not. All right, Joe, just a moment ago, you were saying that, you know, doing things like sending out absentee ballots essentially opens up the door to fraud. Uh, and yet, this has been studied repeatedly, and the instances of widespread voter fraud are just low or frankly non-existent. Even in the last election, the 2020 election, there were many allegations, uh, misinformation, frankly, about widespread voter fraud, and they turned out to be false. So then why then is this legislation needed? If we find what? that voters are not fraudulently casting their ballots, why do you feel the need or why do you believe that we should have legislation to essentially cut down on fraud that doesn't exist. 
Well, we can't say that fraud doesn't exist. I know at my personal residence in South LA, I received three ballots and two of the ballots were people who didn't even live in my home. Now, who's to say that you have all these apartment buildings, you have all these residents who are receiving two and three ballots, the, the potential to get these ballots filled out and put in is absolutely high. Is it voter fraud? No, it's election fraud. Because voter fraud says that the voter is actually doing something, but election fraud says that there is a lot of election irregularities. Now, I can't speak to the lawsuits that has been put in place, but I can say the possibility is there, but we have to keep people honest. Joe, you ran against Maxine Waters uh, in, in November. You garnered 28% of the vote and Waters had 71% of the vote. What has changed in these past few months in terms of circumstances or your strategy that makes you think you can win the next time around? Well, I think, you know, during the 2020 election, we ran a really hard fought campaign. We can't forget that Maxine Waters is one of the most powerful, most formidable opponents in the House. But the fact remains, you know, we don't have a huge Republican presence in South LA. I was that Republican presence and people are starting to you know, look for different options when it comes to leaderships. This is what gives me the confidence that we can go through in another election cycle and, you know, with a possible win as an outcome. And if not, then we'll we'll try again. All right, Joe Collins, Republican candidate for California's 43rd district. We'll, of course, be watching that 2022 election to see if you can make up some of that gap against the incumbent Maxine Waters. And coming up, the ballots have been counted and Amazon has defeated unionizers in one of its warehouses. We have those details next. 